Hello and welcome to day 17 of this book, Frameworks Volume 3, Jesus. And today we're thinking about miracles. Miracles. As we look at the life of Jesus recorded for us in the Gospels, uh, when he stepped down out of heaven into our human experience and he's, he lives on our earth with us in, uh, in the flesh. Uh, Jesus performs many miracles. Now, what are we to understand of these miracles? Uh, what sort of category of activity are we supposed to think of them as? Back in the 17th century uh, or um, uh, into the 18th century, uh, as people started to investigate the world in a modern scientific way, um, and as we uh, came up with the idea as, as humans, as we thought about the laws of nature, Miracles were thought of as a transgression of those laws, a breaking of those laws. So when Jesus uh, does a miraculous act, he is breaking the laws of nature. And so often people still think like that, as if Jesus breaks into the world and he um, uh, changes these laws which govern the world. Uh, and for a moment he steps in and kind of does things uh, differently. Uh, prior to that 18th, 17th, 18th century uh, kind of thinking, uh, people used to think of uh, uh, miracles as acting uh, differently to the way things normally act. It is when God does things differently to the way he would normally do things. And I think that's a really helpful way of thinking about things, uh, if only to remind us that actually everything exists and happens because God has so ordained it. When I let go of an apple, it falls to the ground. Why? Not because somehow there's this impersonal uh, thing called the laws of nature which tell it to do so, but because God has so created this world so that things left uh, out in the middle of the air will drop to the ground. And actually all creation is governed not by some um, uh, pre-existing law of physics and of nature, uh, and, and God has to abide by those rules and sometimes chooses to break them. No, no. All these things have been put in place by God. Uh, and we see that when Jesus speaks to the winds and the waves, he is in charge, he is in control over those things. In Job chapter uh, 36 and 37 and, and then really into 38 and 39, when the Lord God Almighty is speaking to Job, he declares to Job and tells him of how he is in charge of everything. He understands and he puts things in place. The cycle of water, uh, the clouds and the thunder, the lightning, the snow and the rain. Um, uh, when he speaks of the uh, space and the stars and the universe, of how things have been formed and created. The Bible uh, tells us that all this has been put in place by God. The dawn of each day, the snow, the hail and the lightning. Uh, the management of the galaxies, the organization of food for all the living creatures, his care for all the animals. All those things are not governed by some uh, impersonal, some um, pre-existing laws of nature, but they are governed by the Lord God Almighty himself. And so it's not that when Jesus comes in, he's doing anything different. In fact, it's the most natural thing in the world for Jesus to come and to do things which to us are unnatural and different. Uh, Jesus says most of the time, let's have things this way. Uh, but then he steps in and occasionally says, but I want things just to be a little bit different right now. Oh, the wind and the waves. Actually, I'd just like you to stop. And they stop. Uh oh, you can't walk. Your legs don't work. I can make that work because I am in charge of everything anyway. The fact that your legs walk normally, the fact that your eyes see normally, the fact that anything uh, which we just take for granted all the time, actually we're surrounded by the miraculous. The seeds in the ground growing and blossoming, uh, are creating new life, the birth of a child, the birds which fly in the sky, uh, the stars which glow at night, uh, day after day after day, night after night, all these things are miraculous things, uh, kind and good gifts given to us by our Heavenly Father, who rules and overrules over all the world. So what are miracles? It's just God being in control. And occasionally he does things a little bit differently uh, to suit his purposes, to bring about his plans. When Jesus breaks the bread and he uh, shares the fish out, the five loaves and the two fish, and he's feeding thousands, he's not breaking the laws of nature. He's just telling the world to do what he wants it to do what he wants, um, uh, how he wants to carry things out 
just like he always does. And he normally has one way of doing things and occasionally he steps in and does something a little bit different. But it is always Jesus in control. But also, the miracles, what are the miracles for? What are they doing? What category of thing are they? Well, the Bible says to us again and again that they're signs. They're signs pointing us to the Lordship of Jesus, pointing us to the rescue which he brings. Why does he choose to perform the particular miracles that he does? Why are these the ones which are recorded for us? Well, the Bible says that these things have happened. These things have been recorded for us so that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And so let's marvel at these miraculous signs and let's marvel at the miracles day by day which the Lord performs in sustaining, uh, in upholding the universe, in giving us many wonderful good things. Uh, let's daily give glory to God and follow him, trusting the Lord Jesus to give us life, uh, to rescue us and to bring us to that place where we will live with him forever in that eternal resurrection hope of heaven.